Okay, this is the P1 paper from October 2020. Question number six. This question is a straight line graph question. We're going to be working at the equation of straight lines, parallel lines, perpendicular lines. Uh, we've got a little bit at the end here on area of a triangle. Now, it's quite nasty the last little bit, but we'll, we'll get there in the end. Uh, yeah, so, okay, if we're doing this question number six, first part is just finding the gradient of the line AB. That's easy. So let's get on and get started with it. But later, I'm actually going to draw a sketch out to help me when I'm doing the over triangle. But I don't need to start off with that. So to make a start, if I've got the A is the point minus 4, 11, and B is the point 8, 2, if I want to work out the gradient AB, I always write all these formulae down to remind myself it's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Writing the formula down means I'm less likely to make a mistake, and also it means that I'll, I'll start remembering all these formulae and being able to use them. Applying that then is going to be 2 minus 11 over 8 minus minus 4, so that's 8 plus 4. That all works out to be minus 9 over 12, or rather minus 3 quarters. So that's the gradient of AB. Then it says point M is the midpoint of AB. Line L passes through M and is perpendicular to AB. I'm going to have to work out the equation of that line. So at that stage, you think, right, hang on a bit. Let's just try and do a quick sketch of what we've got here. Now, in terms of the sketch, you can see how long I'm going to take over this. Obviously, I'm talking to you while I'm doing it. But I'm not going to take ages over my diagram. All I am going to try and do is if they tell me it's minus 4, 11 and 8, 2, then just put them in sort of, in fact, no, even that's not right. Minus 4, 11 and 8, 2, something like that. So I'm going to say that's a minus 4, 11. It's in the right quadrant, you know, minus 4 and plus 11 there, but not measured, even closely being measured. And the other one's 8, 2, B is 8, 2 here, which again, yeah, across 8 and up 2. Reasonable, not perfect, but good enough. They've now said, I've got a midpoint M here, okay, and then there's going to be a line passing through M, but perpendicular, so that's what L looks like. So, for example, when I'm working out the equation of that line, I know it's got a positive gradient. I don't know whether it's passing through a positive or a negative intercept there, because my graph isn't, isn't accurate enough, but that's not going to matter. I've got that situation here. And more importantly, they're asking me, part B is saying, can I find the equation of this line? So if I'm trying to find the equation of this line, my diagram sort of helps me in that if I want the equation of a straight line, I want a point on the line, right, I'm going to go away and work out M. That'll give me a point on the line. And I want the gradient of the line. Well, if it's perpendicular to AB, then I can work out what the gradient is. So I've got my game plan now. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing to do this question, uh, it's just up to me as to which order I do things. I'm going to find the gradient first of all. So I'm going to tell the examiner what I'm doing. Gradient of L. So the gradient of L is equal to minus 1 over the gradient of M up there. Now, I, I always say on my videos, don't do this. You should be able to just do it quickly in your head. But that's what I'm actually doing here. But I wouldn't do that if I, was, if I wasn't showing it to you guys. I'd just say the gradient is 4 over 3. Turn it upside down and make it a negative. Right, so I've got the gradient of my line L. I need a point on the line. That needs finding the midpoint. So finding midpoint M. I'm going to say exactly the same. Oops, excuse me. Exactly the same about finding the midpoint as I did about the other thing that I just worked out. Write down the equation that you're using. Just um, midpoint of a line is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. You don't have to, but first of all, I think I'm less likely to make a mistake filling everything in now. Minus 4 plus 8 over 2, and 11 plus 2 over 2. But also, I'm more likely to remember it the more often I write that thing down. Tidying that up, I'm not going to take ages over that. That just works out to be 2... 13 over 2. So if I go back to my diagram, 
I don't put too much on this diagram here, but I've now got that this point here um, is 2, 13 over 2. And now I can go back to what I was doing. I want to find the equation of L. And if I want to find the equation of line L, I'm going to use formula that I'm going to write down. Y minus Y1 is equal to M X minus X1. I write it down every time I do these. And actually, do you know, I'm just going to drag this down onto the next page here, just so I can see what I'm doing. That when I do do these, I also here sort of list what I've got. And then, as I said two seconds ago, it means I'm less likely to make a mistake with copying errors. The X1 was 2, the Y1 was 13 over 2, the M, stop and just check. You've got two different gradients here. It's the 4 over 3 one that I'm going to be using. All of those just get substituted in. So if I substitute those things in, then I'm going to get Y minus Y1. So Y minus 13 over 2. Sorry, handwriting. 13 over 2 is equal to M, 4 over 3 x minus x1, x minus 2. If we go back and just check, but I do know because I clocked it as we were going through, yeah, that's what they want this time, written down in that format rather than y equals mx plus c. Okay, that's not going to catch me out then. So doing this, if I multiply everything by 3, I'll get rid of that fraction there. If I multiply everything by 6, I'll get rid of that one and that one there. Now you don't have to, you can do it a lot slower than that, but I'm going to. I'm just going to multiply everything through by 6, and I'm going to get 6y minus 39 is equal to 4, no, rather, is equal to 8x minus 2 there. Multiply out that bit, 6y minus 39 equals 8x minus 16, and then in the format they want it, 8x minus 6y plus 23 equals naught. That is the answer to part B in the right sort of uh, format as well. Okay, give you time just to have a look at the answer for part um, C here. This is complicated and it's a little bit nasty, but we'll go, go ahead and do it. So it says C lies on L such that the area of the triangle ABC is equal to 37 and a half square units. Okay, so let's just put it on. Um, I'm gonna say C is there, just as an arbitrary point. Let's just move this. Uh, this was the equation of my line, I'm gonna put that down there. Um, so C is this point here such that now this area here is 37.5. Well, this area is going to be half the base times the height. I'll tell you something that I haven't put on, that I should really put on, was these are perpendicular, aren't they? So the area of that triangle is going to be half the base times the height. So what I need to do is I need to work out the length of that one which I can do just using Pythagoras. I know what A is and I know what B is. So I work out the length of a line. And then because I know the area is 37.5, I can use that length alongside the area to work out what MC is gonna be. Let's do that first and I'll explain while I'm doing it. So uh, if I'm gonna be doing this bit, again, need to explain it to the examiner as well. So part C, find a, B, so A, B squared is equal to X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. And actually, I don't tend to write that. I actually write that A, B is the square root of that. That's the equation for the length of a line. So let's do that straight away. Put the values in, just be careful, we don't make any um, calculating errors when we're doing something like this. We've got all this information we already had, minus four, minus eight, and 11 minus two. We used those when we were doing the gradient. So AB works out to be the square root of, that works out to be two, two, five. 
or in other words, AB works out to be equal to 15. So going back to my diagram, I've now got that this length here is equal to 15. So what I'm going to do from that then is I'm going to be able to work out MC here because the area of the triangle is equal to half base times height. So if I want to find what MC is, I can say that the area equals half base times height equals 37.5. And so that's half 15 times MC equals 37.5, which gives me that MC works out to be equal to five. Now here's the nasty, tricky bit. There's a couple of bits to it, first of all. Firstly, I've sort of ignored the fact that I needed to find two possible pairs of coordinates for C. Well, that's because C could be where I've put it, but it could just as easily be, rather than being that side, it could be that side there where that's the triangle ABC. So I could have this one in here. When I'm doing that, one thing to be aware of then was that if it was there, however far that way I've got to go to find one of my C's, I've got to do the same thing that way to find my other C. And let's now put that on the diagram as maybe C1 and then C2 there, the other side of the line. But this is this is the trick and this is just, just nasty to see. I don't know whether you'd be able to do this in an exam under exam conditions, but we'll explain it to you anyway, just so you've seen it before. And it comes down to this triangle here. And say, so what triangle? Well, let's actually draw it in, in red so you can see. If I consider that there is a triangle there, well, we just worked out that this length here is five, and we know that the gradient of L was four over three there. So if the gradient of L was four over three, four over three is Y over X there is four over three. Well, that makes sense to scale as being that triangle there. It's a three, four, five triangle, Pythagoras three squared plus four squared equals five squared. And spotting that is almost impossible. But if you do spot that, we can now work out C1 really easily. Because if I want to work out what the coordinates of C1 are, I know the coordinates of that. If I simply add on three to the x axis of uh, x value and four to the y value, then I'm going to get C1. Similarly, if I want to work out C2, if I take three off of there and take four off of there, I'll end up with C2. So a really tough spot there. This isn't for everybody to be fair. I know you're going to watch this video, but this is absolutely directed at those students who are looking at getting 100% on the exam, looking at getting an A star, looking at not making too many mistakes. Rest of you, you can follow it through, but don't panic and say, oh, I never would have seen that in the exam. <laughs> Neither would I. I wouldn't have been able to do this under exam conditions, but I can explain it to you guys so that if it comes up again, fair enough, you could have a go at trying to do this. When this came up for the first time in that year, it would have been an absolute nightmare of a question for a lot of people. But to be fair to the examiners, it's the last part of a question. It's not going to have any impact on um, following marks through or anything. And it is a good way of just checking the difference between our absolute superstar mathematicians. Right, how do I explain that to the examiner then? Well, if I get the answer right, they know that I knew what I was doing here. Um, I've got the MC worked out to be equal to five. So all I do as part of my working out would be to say... If M was here, and then I know the gradient is equal to three, four here, and that's five. So they might, must actually be the values three and four, which means C1 is just going to be two, 13 over two, two, because that was the original, sorry, that's my M with a translation of three across and four up. So if I do a translation of three across and four up, that's going to give me 
five, and I'm going to put it as a decimal this time. 13 over 2 plus 4 will be 10.5. So that's C1. C2 would be the same thing, 2, 13 over 2, but this time minus 3 and minus 4. So if I do that to C2, I'm going to get minus 1 and 13 over 2, take away 4, gives me minus, no, no, sorry, doesn't give me 2.5. So C1 and C2 are those two possibilities in terms of where C can be in order to make the area of that triangle 37.5 or the area of that triangle. 37.5. Okay, difficult one. I normally end the videos with, hopefully that makes sense. That is a tough question. You might need to watch the video a couple of times, but that's the way that you do the last part of that one. The rest of it's been okay, but that last part is a bit tricky.